I think everyone's experienced that occurrence in a, in a, in a series where you have a character who you were kind of indifferent about or even just didn't like. And in one uh, one chapter, one episode, they were able to turn around their spot and really just at that point you were very intrigued by uh, their character and you want to see them keep going. Uh, I think a good example would be uh, Finral from Black Clover. He was kind of like I, I didn't hate him. I, I didn't really care for him though. And I think a lot of people were just like, eh, uh, nothing too special. And then the Water Temple arc happened, and he, he really turned around for a lot of people. And then it's just been uphill since there. Um, in this chapter, I, I wanted to use the picture of Esso, the, um, one of the three, uh, cause now we know there's, in, from this chapter, uh, chapter 60 of Jujutsu Kaisen, that there's three of these brothers, and, uh, you have, uh, Esso, the one who's got the, these big, like, badass, like, blood wings, like, shaped like a wasp, and he's using this, like, he called it, like, Supreme Rock Technique Wing King, and, you know, he's, he's got, a, he's turned around and he has it come out of his back and his whole, like, complex about his back because he has this big, like, gouged out, like, eye holes and mouth on his back. Very weird looking, but it, it's, it's a really awkward panel because he's in, like, weird, like, almost bondage gear. I don't know what you'd really call that, but, like, I like looking at his wings, that, that like, really sick insect style of wing and then just, like, the blood dripping off it. And then one of the panels where it's, like, dripping onto a rock and, and, and just starting to like decay it. I just think it's a it's just a really cool layout for this chapter. But it was like half half action orientated and I don't even know if I want to use action. Like a lot of it was like run, run away, try not to get touched by this uh this guy's power. And then some backstory on them. And I really like uh Jujutsu Kaisen and Kometsu no Yaiba's take on backstories for villains because a lot of their villains have been really solid. And usually, like, series will have, like, they'll have some good villains, they'll have some kind of, like, forgettable ones, but they'll have, like, you know, a couple really good ones. I I feel like with Jujutsu Kaisen and Kometsu no Yaiba, especially, like, the writers put more time, like, trying to develop the villains and, and getting them all laid out than a lot of the heroes, which is fine with me. It, it adds a different level of flavor to the series. And even these guys who, you know, they're probably, we don't know how far these guys are going to these three brothers. Um know how long they're going to be in the series for but they're they've already got really interesting lore and really interesting backstory to them but you end up getting uh them running away yuji and, and kukisaki are you know, making a break for it trying to get away from this guy and you see like his power like slowly like track them and and keep following them just a little bit touching kukisaki's hair was like decaying it and just like melting it away destroying it and yuji who just grabs onto her you know picks her up and, and keeps running and uh you, you see a part where she's kind of like a little indifferent about the fact that she had to get carried off by him because yuji obviously has always been a uh very physically uh capable a very physical enhanced guy we haven't seen much of his powers yet outside of like what divergent fist which is just like uh an intense kind of punch you know that does damage to you know soul-based things and uh black flash but we haven't we even got much outside of that we'll probably get to that eventually but Kugisaki, who's more of a, she's more of like a technique and like setup kind of character. So, you know, obviously in this situation, she needed help from him. Because if it wasn't for him, she'd probably be in a, in a pretty bad situation. But she, she turned that around in the end of this chapter. And I'll get to that when I get there. But uh, the other brother, uh, they, they say his name. Uh, uh, his name is Kechizu, or however that's pronounced. You know, he, he beat him there by taking a direct route. He surprises him, you know, spits blood all over Yuji, and then in that moment, uh, Ezo comes out, gets his blood all over uh, Kugisaki, and I guess they're getting, like, a shitty spot, like, they're both, like, in, now they're in the throes of this guy's, of these guys' techniques, and they explain, essentially, that um, it works, it, they can use each other's blood, which I think is cool, any of the, of the three brothers uh, seemingly can use the, the other's blood, like, uh, if, if what, like, if Esso couldn't get any of his blood on, uh, on Yuji or Kugisaki, but uh, the other brother Kechizu did, then Esso could still use it, which I think is really cool. I like that like extra layer of uh, of just like danger that presents to their ability. Like it's not like it's some absurdly complicated technique. It's just the the level of use to it is really cool, and the, the fact that it, it makes all three of them formidable. Uh, as long as any of them are able to get their attack off. And I really like how uh, this author does a lot of, uh, a lot of like, attack abilities. They're, they're just very interesting when you think about it. Like, 
I could go. I could do a whole video on Hanami's uh, move set. I really loved the fight with Hanami and how very like simplistic yet like uniquely handled and uh, presented his techniques were. But once we get to that, you know, they they explain essentially they have uh, uh, Yuji's got fifteen minutes uh, before he dies and. And Kugisaki's got 10 minutes, so, you know, this is going to be a timed battle. It's, it's just going to be straight, like, whichever one can take out the other side first as fast as they possibly can. It's not going to be a, a, a long, drawn-out, like, strategic battle. This is a, we need to go crazy and, and wreck stuff. But you, you end up getting the backstory, and I thought this was really cool, because this gave these guys a backstory to them to, like, make them feel more important. So maybe they'll they'll stick around, or maybe not like them in general, but you know the, the thing that gave them power because they're just the what we're seeing are uh, them like put into bodies uh, for them to take over, and that's their form since then. Because you get uh, you get the story of this woman who like had a, a weird genetic issue disorder, and she could she would essentially get pregnant with like merged people of both human and cursed spirits, similar to what Mahito is. And, uh, you know, it obviously costs her issues in life. I don't think I need to go too, too crazy of what that probably was bad for. Like, it, it, you probably, you're pretty much having, like, demonic children at that point. And while, like, explaining it, she ended up going, like, to a, to a, a, a temple ran by Jujutsu Sorcerers. And here you have this guy that explained Noritoshi Kamo, who was the, uh, the most evil sorcerer in their history. So not only do you have, uh, Sakuna, uh, who's, like, the super big cursed spirit. You have Mahito, who's like this young, very, uh, he's got a lot of potential cursed spirit. He's this villain, kind of like moving up, but he's, you know, he's a, he's a human cursed spirit hybrid, which is really cool, makes him unique. But also you have a bad guy from the uh, Jujutsu Sorcerer side, so you have their own, like, you have their own big villain that could uh, still come out of there, be his own faction. You know, it wouldn't surprise me, because it's obviously very old. It wouldn't surprise me if he's still alive through whatever means, because he was really powerful. He's, uh, they explain that he's kind of, like, scientific and, like, an intellectual, and he had a bunch of cur different kinds of, like, special grade cursed objects and stuff. So it wouldn't surprise me if his character was still alive. But we're explaining now that, uh, that since this woman, uh, nine pregnancies, nine abortions, and they're showing all of the, uh, they're showing all of the, uh, the, like the fetuses that were in there. And they said, uh, death painting wombs, numbers one through three. And they only show, I, I feel like I missed something because they show, uh, nine, but then, then like these guys are one through three. So it makes me wonder if, I don't remember if they mentioned if there's like only three, uh, or kept and maybe like the other six were destroyed or they were only possession of three. I'd have to go back and, and, and look, but it was just a really, really kind of creepy aspects there to these characters but at the same time they're able to kind of add in this very unfortunate tragic uh layer to their character because these guys were you know they're they're pretty much just uh little like barely developed fetuses like forever conscious to a degree sealed away and the only existence that they could really have to acknowledge was each other so for uh for 150 years these guys were pretty much just uh, just in uh, in relations with their, you know, their other two brothers, these guys, and that laying out this again, this third brother, this guy who they don't see his name. I don't think I don't I don't see anything about this guy's name. But they're talking about how uh, the they don't really trust the the curse. But they're talking about. I'm guessing they're talking about uh, maybe Sakuna and their plan, at least with Sakuna and what you know their end game would be, uh, bringing you know the age of cursed spirits. And uh, these guys are just like. He's like, Esso, you'll live for uh, Kechizu. Kechizu, you'll live for me, and I will live for Esso. So these guys are very much, you know, they're looking out for each other, and they're trying just to, you know, do what they can to keep each other alive and do what's best for the three of them. They're like, oh, the uh, you know, we three are one, which is really cool because then, it, you know, it adds, it adds a nice aspect to them, gives them a very humanized uh, layer to their characters, as well as it explains, like, the fact that their powers are all kind of linked, which I think is really cool. I, I really like that aspect of their abilities. But then it gets back to the chapter. Like I was talking about, like, it was like, you saw the kind of, like, this look on Kugisaki's face, or she's, like, a little indifferent that, she, you know, she had to get saved by Yuji. And, uh, you know, because Yuji's physically able to, to outrun those attacks and Kugisaki wasn't. And I was like, okay, yeah, she, she got saved there, but, you know, it's not like it didn't make sense. But then... I completely, like, didn't think of this, because her power is based on, like, on, like, this voodoo kind of style, and, you know, she's, they're covered in these guys' blood, and she just pulls out one of her nails, 
And, you know, with voodoo, you need a part of them, like blood, a hair, or anything like that. And then you can kind of link to them. So, obviously, them cover, her covered in their blood, and they're linked. She's just like, you guys have a pretty strong power. And it's, it's seemingly like this um, potential one-shot. But you did a bad job in fighting me just because power counters. You know, you always get that, like, ability, like, straight up, you have a bad match for me. Again, like, look at something like... Um, like uh, anybody who uses like fire types, like something like Natsu or uh, or you know like and Black Clover, you had the mirror magic from Gotch against Hatri's light magic. You know, even if he's way more powerful, just the fact that those two counter each other. But here we have just like, well, you have a blood technique, and guess what? <laughs> I'm a voodoo style person, so you're fucked. She just stabs herself through the hand, and you can tell like the damage being done to those guys and. And she says, like, all right, let's just, uh, let's play a game of chicken and stamina. And I was just like, God damn, she's, Yugi Saki, like, I talked about in the early starts of the video, but the fact that she was, like, in one chapter, like, from, like, a spotlight, I was just like, eh, I think she's okay. To just go into, like, hey, this bitch might be pretty badass after all. I, I, it's pretty nice for a character. Like, I was talking about someone recently, like, talking about, uh, about Kugisaki, you know, as the female lead for the series, and uh, I was like, oh, she's she's pretty cool. She's uh, she's uh, I liked the, her fight during the Tokyo versus Kyoto battle, but there was nothing really to to really talk about. Like even if you go back to my review on that, I was just like, I mean, it was kind of cool. Nothing really to like get me hyped on her, but this was just like, I don't want to mess with this bitch. She's she's pretty crazy, so. Uh, good chapter. I liked it. I liked the layout of the brothers. I liked the lore and just Kugi. I, I just so like enjoyed of Kugi Saki's uh, display in this chapter that it was just it was so interesting to see. And I, I really want to know what she does beyond this because she's all like all about like setup. Like you know she like can put like her uh, her energy into her uh, into nails and like hit them into something and then they're pretty much can uh well can be like landmines and stuff where she's you know she's got her power in something she can detonate it for different attacks and do all these different things but now she's got free range with their blood so she's probably just gonna like i just predict in the next chapter she's gonna have her arm out and she's just gonna go nail 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 and and just like ravage her own arm but at the same time taking these guys out and she'll probably she'll probably just be like out of commission for uh, probably the rest of the arc, maybe an arc after that, just recovering, but that'll be, if she does that, that's gonna be a pretty badass win, and I'll, I'll give her that, for sure, if that happens. I mean, she's already badass in this one, so I'm hoping that she ups the ante and goes crazier next chapter. So, tell me in the comments below what you think about this. I really like Jujutsu Kaisen, I'm really hoping that it picks up more outside of Japan. I know it's been doing really well in Japan, as well as Chainsaw Man, and Chainsaw Man is starting to pick up outside of Japan, but I'm hoping Jujutsu Kaisen will soon. Other than that, like I said, really appreciate if you drop a comment below, thumbs up the video, but friend the like button, subscribe button, and check out my other videos. But other than that, I appreciate everyone who's already subscribed, and I thank y'all for listening. Bye.